Joining us now, Chief National Correspondent for the New York Times oh Magazine, God, Mark Leibovich. His cover Holy story for the magazine's upcoming issue features a cartoon scene mm -hmm. titled Trumplandia. Mark it's drew hard it himself, to make out the characters the yeah. on TV, but Good go job, and Mark. study it online. It is worth it. And the piece, titled This Town Melts Down, Mark examines President Trump's impact on Washington. I can't wait to look at that. What cover. is the impact? Big idea. Wow, the big <laughs> idea. Well, the, the big idea is that, look, he was going to blow up Washington. He was going to change Washington. This story sort of looks at looks what this like he's great doing experiment a good job. looks like. Well, six months in. I mean, I think on the surface, when you sort of look around, the swamp is, like as I say, anything but drained. It's more like a sort of a gold-plated hot tub at this point. Explaining yeah. the melting down part, though. <laughs> Why is the town melting down? I was a headline writer. I don't know. I don't write that. You don't think the town no, is melting down? No, it's not. Down? Well, here's what it is. It's, it's all, it all revolves around this capricious force the unpredictability, the unorthodox, shall we say, nature of, of the president, which is, I would say, more of a neutral reading. I mean, you hear, as Casey was alluding to before, you hear a lot more colorful language, privately, especially among Republicans. But the fact is, there's a whole new calculus on how you influence the White House. How why, you, we, why was Sean Spicer afraid to talk to you on the record? Why was he afraid to talk to? He's afraid to talk to a lot of people on the record these days. You'll notice he's sort of kind of disappeared the last few weeks. Right. But but actually, Sean, I posited as an example one, as sort of a crossover figure who was sort of an amiable hack back in the old days, who was a man about town, who sort of knew better, who uh, was you know well known in polite society, who decided to cross over and yep. be in the middle of this experiment, and he's been transformed like so many people like him who have tried to play in that world. Um, you know, he's a very, he's a nervous guy. I mean, he's got the toughest, one of the toughest jobs around when, you know, you have but the But he told you that him. if he talked to you on, on, on record, it would hurt him. His current status. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because the president cares, you know, fame is a zero-sum game in that White House, and the president is not one for sharing. Okay, so teaser kit time. Tell us a story about uh, you're talking to, everybody loves Hope Hicks. She's great. You're in there talking to Hope Hicks. Tell us that story. It's in the piece. Uh, well, Hope is someone who you know, I came to know um, and like during the campaign. I went to visit with her uh, in the course of reporting, and we're just sort of chit-chatting in an ornate conference room in the West Wing. Uh, after about 15, 20 minutes, she goes, you want to come say hello? And I'm like, well, to, to who? To you know, Spicer? To you know, Reince or someone? She goes, no, no, come say hi to POTUS. And I'm like, yeah, sure. I mean, it's usually not that easy to get right. the president <laughs> scheduled. There's right. usually a, some kind of screening or briefing that goes on. Uh, you know, I don't know if this was staged or not. But uh, yeah, I walked in. It was 12.30 in the afternoon. And the president was sitting uh, in a little dining room area off the Oval Office by himself. Uh, he was watching a tape, I think, of Fox and Friends from like four or five hours before. I uh, came in, greeted me, I, I congratulated him on his victory, he told me I treated him very badly during the campaign, the New York Times is failing, but he was very, very nice, very pleasant about it. And um, we talked for about, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Um, he was exactly as you would expect. He's, he, he was talking about fake news, how everyone's treating him badly, Fox is treating him well, uh, he's doing great. Um, you know, all, all the greatest hits sort of condensed into about 10, 15 minutes, and uh, I left. <laughs> so. But kind of the central point, at least my central takeaway from the piece in bit, was what you alluded to: the swamp isn't drained, and you you had this great you had this great imagery of people sitting in the Trump Hotel, all of them kind of waiting for their moment. You know, Corey Lewandowski <laughs> passes through, and Anthony Scaramucci passes through, yeah. and they're all basically have free access to the president, free access to the White House. It would seem, and it's the opposite of what he said he was going to do. I mean, there's a lot that's the opposite of what he said he was going to do. It's unclear how serious he was, but the fact is. If you are close to this president, if you are perceived as being close to this president, and people who have his ear are not very unshy about it because it's a good business proposition, um, you know, you're going to get hired by a lot of corporations and trade groups and what have you who have always, you know, thrown a lot of money at, at this town, and, and that has, uh, you know, that hasn't really changed at all. It's just a different guy in the White House. We're reading again this morning in light of the Donald Trump Jr. story, stories internally in the West Wing about a circular firing, firing squad, people going after each other, uh, people not happy with their jobs, not happy with the president. What did you pick up being in the West Wing? And that's access most people watching and most people in the country will never have. What did you pick up off the people you were around? Well, well first of all, it's all true. And, and, you know, you read the president's tweet from this morning, which is, you know, not the first time he said this, but how this is all made up and how people who quote sources don't know what they're talking about. I mean, this is all true. Um, I mean, that's, I mean, as, as you know, obviously 
I have a I have a dog in this because you know I'm in the I'm in the press. But yeah, this is all true. I mean, but it's true. They all leak on each other. It's about as easy a place to report in. And you know, I sit amidst all of our White House reporters as as you could ever imagine. So that's all for real. And it's not even a circular firing squad. It goes in all directions. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like you're being too narrow in your directional description here. Mark Alpern. Wow. Mark Mark beneath the president, uh, which members of the administration have come become kind of the celebrities of official Washington? Well, I think everyone in a way, Mark. I mean, you know, everyone, Brian Priebus has become a household name. Steve Bannon has become a household name. Sean Spicer, Sarah Huckabee. I mean, it's, I mean, this is not a unwell-known administration, and partly it's because they all are seen, I mean, there's a there's kind of a parlor game around, you know, who's up, who's down this week, and there's this kind of circular firing squad, as, as Willie said, but also this, this, I guess, a roulette wheel of, like, who's imminent departure. So, look, I mean, the profile is not an issue for the people who work for the president right now. Okay, Mark Leibovich, thank you very much. Uh, we'll be yeah, looking for your cover story piece. in the New York Times yes. magazine. That and the illustration. They illustri your illustration is <laughs> fantastic. You sound like Han Solo in The Force Awakens. <laughs> it's <laughs> true. It's oh, all God. true. God. It's, Look at that. It's true. Still ahead, yeah. Donald Trump Jr. was the, supposed to be the family member who wasn't part of Washington. Mm -hmm. That is changing fast as congressional investigators want a word with him following his release of the email trail of the meeting in question. Plus, NBC News confirms President Trump was aware of his son's initial statement defending his meeting with a Russian lawyer, saying it was about adoption. It was a statement that was so incomplete it required multiple follow-ups to clarify it. Morning Joe is coming right back. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.